Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Bible study. Uh, it is a blessing to be with you all as we study God's word together. It is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. And so anytime we get an opportunity to study God's word, I pray that you will take full advantage. Amen. So good to see many of you hopping in. Zoom. Hello, Zoom conference call. Hello, YouTube. Amen. Amen. It's good to see all of you once again. Beautiful day here in Sacramento, 80 degrees. We thank God. Amen. So wherever you are, I pray that the Lord is showing his kindness and his favor towards you. Uh, as we uh, begin this evening, I just want to highlight a couple of announcements. Again, if you don't have our text messaging ministry, uh, please make sure you text MORE, M-O-R-E, to 844-352-1682. Again, that's 844-352-1682. Or uh, you can call us and contact us at the church office and we'll make sure that uh, you are in connection with us. These are a couple of announcements uh, that we just want to read in your hearing. Uh, if you have a melodious voice, if you feel the call to pre uh, to sing, you, know, you want to preach too, uh, choir rehearsal is tonight in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. Uh, on this coming Thursday, April the 11th. There's new members class via our Zoom number. Uh, if you need that Zoom number, uh, if you are on YouTube and you need the Zoom number, just put in the chat Zoom and I'll make sure that uh, it is provided to you. All right. That's again on Thursday. Friday is our Friday feeding ministry. Uh, it's an amazing opportunity to serve our community. And so uh, that's at our church. Uh, this is every Friday at noon. And so if you would like to participate, please contact the church office, 916-457-8015, or text SERVE to 844-352-1682. We'll make sure that you uh, get connected with Sister Zena on this coming Friday at 6 p.m. is our singles ministry uh, at the church. Uh, at, on Saturday, we have a busy, productive, fruitful day. Homeless outreach will be in the morning. Please contact the church office and they'll make sure that you'll get connected with Sister Yolanda Bassett. Women's and men's ministry will be meeting at 11. Uh, missionaries will be meeting at noon. Kyle's two choir will be rehearsing at two. And then on this coming Sunday are our infant and children baptisms. And we're so grateful. Uh, right now we have about five children that we're going to be baptizing. And if you have children uh, that would like to be baptized, please contact us at 916-457-8015. And please remember that prayer is every morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. The number is 425-436-6351 and an access code of 484 zero nine six amen but let's get ready to study god's word as we pray together we're at first corinthians 15 first corinthians 15 and verse 20 first corinthians 15 and verse 20 father we thank you yet again for another opportunity to study god's word together and lord i just pray that as you've done and weeks and months and years past that you will speak one more time father perhaps there's someone on here lord and they're searching for an answer they're searching for a solution father direct them to you because you are the answer you are the solution lord someone may just need to hear a word from you god to let them know they're on the right track that you haven't left them you haven't abandoned them you haven't forsaken them lord speak to each of us god exactly where we need to be focus us lord wherever we may be right now whether it's at home in the car at work god i pray that you will God, just uh, give us a, a, a mind to, to, to hear, an ear to hear, Lord, a mind to receive, a heart to receive, that will leave this place, God, with testimony. God, I'm so glad I went to Bible study tonight. Lord, many of us worked all day. Many of us, Lord, had other obligations, God, prior to Bible study. But Father, give us strength for one more hour, because we know that the enemy does not want us to hear and to receive and to live this word, because our strength and our victory is found in the word of God. But Lord, I pray for strength for one more hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, we're at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 20. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 20, where in the dead center of uh, the resurrection of dead Paul, his argument, when I say argument, it's not that he's being negative, it's an argument um, that he's trying to portray, he's trying to make sure and convey that the church of Corinth, the church in Corinth, understands the value of 
um, the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we just celebrated that uh, a couple of Sundays ago, but every day, every day is resurrection day. Every day that we are able to experience God's goodness and God's love and God's kindness toward us, that's resurrection. So you don't have to wait for a particular Sunday in the springtime to celebrate uh, the resurrection, but in fact, and indeed it is every day that the Lord allows us to be here because it's because of him that we live, move, and have our being. And so let's just dig right in. It says, uh, and again, last week we left off that there were people that were getting in the camp. We found that out. And there were people that were getting in the circle of the church at Corinth who were trying to tell them, you know, I don't think that Jesus really died. And that nobody ever was risen from the dead. Y'all believe that silly stuff. That's foolishness. That doesn't make sense. And the church begins to receive that and begins to, to you know, kind of, kind of have inquiries about, well, maybe they're, you know, they wouldn't lie to us. And why would they, you know, they're, they're, they're a scientist and they've been to school and they've done all of these things. So perhaps they, they, they can't be lying. But it, that discounts their faith. And so Paul has to come in and he has to kind of reset them and recenter them um, as it relates to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, because uh, they allow people in their circle. And we talked about last week, uh, If for those who missed it, you can go back on YouTube and watch it. But we talked about you got to be careful about the people that are in your ear. You have to be careful about the people that you allow to have um, authority over your faith life, because there's always going to be dissenting voices. There's always going to be people that say things like, well, uh, you know, ain't nobody believing all that, you know, that stuff, that's old and that Bible is old and 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 don't nobody believe that stuff and y'all crazy you you, you got you, you got a you got your own personal experience and we'll, and we'll talk about that soon but you have your own personal experience do not allow somebody else's lack of faith or somebody else's ignorance to infiltrate and intoxicate your experience with Jesus Christ nobody knows like you do what the Lord has done for you. And so when people try to come into your life, you got to understand it's not, not that we're saying they are the devil, but they've been assigned and sent by the enemy to try to get you and I off track, to get us distracted, to get us uh, removed from our destiny. It's verse 20, 1 Corinthians 15, listen to what it says. It says, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. It's a fact. Now, now, no, I, I, you know what? None of us were there over two thousand years ago, right? None of us uh, were were able to walk up to the tomb and see it empty. None of us were there when uh, Jesus ascended into heaven, right? None of us were there. We we've never seen the physical uh, wounds. We've never seen uh, the pierced side. We didn't get that experience. We were not one of the individuals who had a a personal uh, human. Uh, physical experience with Jesus Christ, but that's not needed, y'all. Listen to me. Just because you weren't one of the disciples in the room when Jesus showed up, just because you weren't one of the 500 or so odd people that he showed himself to, just because you weren't walking on the road to Emmaus and Jesus walked up behind you and gave you words of confirmation does not mean that you have not had an experience with Jesus Christ. Your, your experience might not be natural, but it is, in fact, supernatural. When we, and I, I pray that we look back sometimes, we just really reminisce over the course of our lives, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent. You will see uh, opportunities for reflection and opportunities to rejoice and, and to see God's hand, to see Christ in your life, that he was not just working in the physical, that he was not just working in the natural, but he was, in fact, working in a supernatural realm. So we've got to, we've got to get past that. Well, you know, how do we know that Christ wasn't, that, that he really was, it's faith, right? But if you look at what God has done for you, if you look at the, where you are now and where you used to be, right? We talk about this sometimes, celebrate your own progress, but you didn't do that by yourself. You did that because of the God that is in you, that is maturing you, that is allowing you to be better than you've ever been. So it is a fact. It is a fact that Christ was raised from the dead. But listen to this, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. And so Paul is saying Christ's resurrection from the dead, it is the first fruit. It is the first fruit, which means 
that his death and his resurrection changed everything. I was somebody, you know what? We need to celebrate that, right? His resurrection changed everything. It changed the trajectory of the world. It changed the trajectory of our lives, right? It changed everything. If Christ had not died, if Christ had not resurrected, we would not be living the type of life that we are living right now. He changed everything. And so Paul says that he is the first fruit, right? To those who have already died. He is the first fruit for, to those who have already died. And I just want to read this right out of, of, of what is given to us. It says, listen, the term first fruits refers to a sample of an agricultural crop, crop that indicates the nature and quality of the rest of the crop. Therefore, Christ's resurrection gives a foretaste of what those uh, who are believers will experience as well. So if Christ was raised from the dead and he now initiated a new crop, you and I are a part of a different crop, not better. We're not better than those who don't believe. We're just different. We are a part of the crop that knows and understands that death is not the end, right? That when they lay us or cremate us or however you want to be done, that's not the end for us, that there is another life that we will enter into. And in fact, that Christ will return and he's going to resurrect all of us on that great day. And so he says, Jesus was the first fruit, right? He's the, he's the initial sound. He's the one that you can look at and say, if that is what happened to, the, to him, that's what's going to happen to everybody who also obtains the same uh, identifier, which is being saved. So you don't have to worry about death, right? You ain't got to be scared of it because that's not the end, right? That's not the final destination for us. We, in fact, have another life that we're going to be introduced to. He says, for as by a man came death. Oh, yes. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. You all know what happened, right? We didn't got to go back. Well, yes, I, I got to stop saying that. We got new souls. So we know that in Genesis, Adam's crazy behind decided that he was going to let Eve give him the fruit that he knew he wasn't supposed to have. And when Adam disobeyed God, now again, y'all, we like to give the credit and we want to we want to bash Eve. But the Bible says that it wasn't until Adam ate that their eyes opened. Adam was the reason why we have death now. It was not Eve. Eve was the helpmate. Adam was the one who received the instruction from God. And when Adam was deceived, not by Eve, but deceived by the serpent, death was introduced into our existence. We were never supposed to be kicked out of the garden. We were never supposed to experience death. We were never supposed to work and toil and, and pay bills. That was not God's design. But Adam messed it up. Now, we're not going to fight Adam when we get to heaven. We're going we're gonna to practice forgiveness. Amen? All right. We're not going to throw no bows when we go see Adam. In that great day, we're going to understand if Adam made a mistake, right? We all make mistakes. We all sin. We all make bad decisions, right? So we're not going we're not going to tussle with Adam when we get to heaven. We're going to forgive him and because we understand that nobody is perfect. But he says, Adam brought death. Oh, but another man, if, if a man brought death, there had to be a man to come and change it. If Adam messed it up, there had to be a second Adam. We call it, we call Christ the second Adam. The second Adam had to come to straighten everything else out. And some of us, we need to rejoice and we need to shout about the fact because, you know, a lot of times we, it, we don't really get excited like we used to. And I understand because we've got all of this, this blessing gospel and prosperity. And so we, we, it's hard to get excited if, if we don't think we have the wealthy life or that, you know, we, we, we it's a tight month or, or we, we've got to struggle a little bit. But oh my God, when you think about the fact that Jesus had to come into your life, let's make it personal. Let's not just talk about the, the, the Adam, right? But I'm talking about Brandon. I'm talking about you. Put your name there. He had to come into your life that you and I willingly messed up intentionally messed. Intention means that you knew and you still did it. He had to come into that life and straighten everything up. Now, you know, I, I, I'm not one 
to to and I don't get excited about cleaning. I don't. And you know, the worst thing that 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 that, that I can have in my life is that when I have to clean up somebody else's mess. Oh, it ain't nothing like. You know, when I was growing up, my brother, he loved to just mess up dishes, right? He loved to eat cereal and put the bowl in the sink. And I was the one who had to wash it. Now, why I got to wash his dish that he messed up? But aren't you glad that God is not like some of us? God says, I'm going to send Christ. And Christ is willing and ready to come into the, the life that you messed up and straighten that thing out. Oh, and I know we, we we get Holy Ghost, we get spiritual amnesia. We've been saved 40, 50 years, and we done forgot what the Lord has brought us out of. We forgot about the messes that we made that God had to send Christ into to fix and to clean up and to straighten out. But it was nobody but God. It wasn't your intellect. It wasn't your connections. It was nobody but God. He said that, that, that the first one messed it up. The second one had to come in and clean it up. He says, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. So, so Adam introduced death. Jesus introduced the resurrection. We messed it up. Jesus came and cleaned it up. And that's the message, y'all. Listen, this is the message that's going to draw people. This, and, and, and I know people say, well, you know, I got mine. And 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 1 Corinthians 15, 21, I got mine and and you know what? People better get it the way that they can. But but we, we've been called to be his hands and his feet. And, and in the world that we're living in now, if you don't watch the news, if you're not abreast as to affairs and events that are going on in the world, the world is in need of a savior. There are people out here that are broken, people that are worn out, people that are on the verge of a breakdown. And they need to know that there is a God who can fix what they've messed up, that there is a God who can clean up what they've messed up. There is a God who can straighten out a crooked life. If we don't tell people that we're going to lose our young brothers, our young sisters, we're going, listen, we're going to have higher than we need incarceration rates because People have lost their hope in God, in Christ is our hope. And you and I have the responsibility to convey that message and to let people know, I know that it's a fact. Look at me. I know that it's a fact because of what God has done for me. Anybody can be honest on a Tuesday night. That's right, Sister Angela. We can't be secret Christians. We want to hide. No, no, no. When God gives you a brand new start, when God gives you a fresh opportunity, tell somebody because that person might be on the verge of giving up, on the verge of quitting, you know, on the verge of throwing in the towel. It is our responsibility to tell them, listen, there is someone who wants to work in the supernatural that you can see the results in the natural. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. And when you get in, when you get God in that faith element, everything else will work out. It might not be the way you want it, and it might not be on the timeline or the time frame that you desire, but God has always worked everything out in our lives. And if you have not seen the manifestation of that yet, it's because he's still working that thing out. So he says, Adam brought death. Jesus brought resurrection. Adam messed it up. Jesus fixed it. And verse 22, for as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Now, 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 now let's, let's, let's dissect this a little bit, right? Because Adam is the representation of the whole human race that comes after him. All of us are tempted Come on, come on, deep saints. All of us are tempted. Some of us were tempted today. Come on, let's be honest. There's a little, there's an atom in all of us. We're not perfect. We're, we're not wonderful. We're, we're not as great as we want people to think we are. There's an atom in all of us. He says, and all die. All of us have that experience. All of us, come on have put ourselves in harm's way. All of us were at the point of death. And I know, I get it. 
We come to Bible study and we don't, we come to church. I understand. We don't want people to know we messed up. I get it. We don't want people to know we fell, that we that we made a mistake, right? We, we've got church pride, right? We don't want anybody, to, we don't want nobody to know that we sinned since last Sunday. But I came to talk to that Adam that's in you. I came to talk to that Adam that's in you. Because you know you're better than what you're being tempted by. I got a sermon. I'm going to preach it uh, not, 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 not in a little while, but in a little while. Called you're, you're too strong to be this weak. You're too strong to be this weak. That Adam, that thing, it, it, you, you, it, it, much, all this, all this blessing. But that one thing that you know isn't good for you is the one thing that you're drawn to. God says, I, I'm going to give you everything, but it's the one thing that you're not supposed to have is the one thing that draws you in. That's the Adam in you. That one thing that you, you're saving, you're trying, to, but it's like every time I take one step forward, it seems like that thing keeps pulling me back. It's, the, it's that Adam in us. And that thing wants to kill us. That thing, and the, and the serpent, y'all know the serpent is representative of the devil. The, the serpent knows how to talk to you to make you take the bait. Y'all not going to help me like I want you to. That's all right. We'll move on. But if you don't, if you don't tame Adam, if you don't tame that Adam in you, that thing will kill you. If you don't tame the temptation, well, I don't know how we can do that. We human. Greater. That's why I like to repeat that. I had to repeat certain scriptures every week so that you don't forget. You, the greater is in you than he that is in the world. You and I have the, we have the strength and the power to, to tell the enemy, you're not going to take me out of here. Even though I might like it, and even though the temptation sounds good and looks good, I am not taking the bait because I have too much riding on my decision. I have too much future to mess it up. I have too much destiny to let, to, to have this roadblock throw me off. And many of us have, can testify I should have been further along than I am right now. But that doggone Adam that's in me, that doggone Adam, and that serpent that know what I like, he keep pulling me in. He says, for as an Adam, we all die. All, and listen, you whether you want to or not, you can, you can, you can color your hair, you can dye it, you can, you can get surgeries, you can get Botox, and you, you can go vegan, you can do whatever you want to do. This body is breaking down. This body is dying. And we're going to have to leave here. I know they don't make us shout, but listen to this. So also in Christ shall all be made alive. That's twofold. You know, that, that, that we all in Adam, we die, but, but that, that thing that's in us, Christ makes us alive, not just once, but twice. We, we are made alive after we die in the physical, but Christ made us alive when we receive salvation. You know, we, we don't often celebrate, the, we don't celebrate what God has done enough for us. We don't celebrate the fact, what has God made alive in your life? Some of us who are so depressed, uh, just all war, just the devil that wore us out, and that thing, that spirit of God kicked in and look at you, look at who you are and look at where the Lord has brought you from. Can you not look in the mirror and see how God has put a spark in your life? Some of us lost our joy. Some of us lost our smile. Some of us lost our peace, but that thing kicked in and now look at you. You might not be living the life that you want, but my God, you live in a life better than what you came from. Some of us, we came from the deep south. You didn't make it out here wherever you are and, and, and homeowner and, 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 and got them cars and great job because of your own intellect. No, it was, it was God. He brought life. He made you alive again. And y'all know he's able to do that because there are times in our lives, post salvation, hear me, where you're not going to feel your best. That you're going to be challenged, that you're going to be attacked, that you're going to get hit. And Christ will be there to make you alive again. 
The story of Lazarus is not just about him resurrecting him from the dead. It's about him showing you that there's no place that you can be found that God cannot bring new life to. Right now, that relationship, I don't care how dead it, I don't care how bad it is. There's no place where you are that God cannot bring new life to. When Jesus steps into a situation, he's coming with the purpose and the intent to bring new life to that situation. That's physical, that's relational, that's financial, that's psychological, that's emotional, that's physiological. When Wherever you are, hear me tonight, when God shows up, when Jesus shows up, when the spirit of God shows up, it's coming to bring new life to that situation. But my prayer is that you don't miss it because you're too stuck in the emotion of what has happened. We talked about it on last Wednesday in prayer meeting. I pray many of you go back and watch, and you might have to watch that thing over and over and get those scripts because some of us, we miss the breakthrough. Because we've allowed what happened to us to break us down. But when God steps in, he's coming to bring new life. Y'all got to go read Ezekiel. Y'all know Jesus said, I mean, not Je God put Ezekiel. Y'all, this Bible is crazy. In a valley of dry bones. He literally put this man in a valley with skeletons. And do y'all know what God to ask Ezekiel when he put him in that valley? He, this man's looking at heads and hip bones and toes. Y'all know what God asked him? He said, can this thing, can, can these bones live? What? <laughs> what? Not dead bodies. They have decayed. To the point when all you see is the skeleton. And God asked Ezekiel, in the midst of this, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, Lord, you know. And God said, well, speak to him. And when Ezekiel, when that thing kicked into Ezekiel, because see, new life can't start in the situation. Y'all know what we want? We want God to change the situation before he changed us. No, God says, I know how to, before I change the situation, I got to change you first. Because if, if you don't get in your mind that I'm able to bring new life, you'll still act dead in the midst of a new living situation. So God says, no, 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 no. Before I change what's around you, I got to change what's in you. That ain't even in my notes tonight. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. So the question is, is God can bring new life, but it has to start in us. Before God does something to us or for us or around us, he has to bring new life in us. Got to be in the mind. Got to be in the heart. We want God to, oh, God, change this and make this better and bless this and God do something. But why when he hasn't had the ability to change you? You got to let the new life start in you first so that when the change comes on the outside, you'll be in a position to properly receive it. All right, let's break for questions, comments. Star 60 if you're on Zoom, YouTube, put it in the chat. Amen. You know, the, while I'm waiting for somebody, there's a question or comment. You know, the kids say now your mind is ate up. That's the, that's the thing they say. Your mind is ate up. And, and no matter what God does for you, if, 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 the, if that new life has not kickstarted in you first, you will not have an appreciation for what God is doing around you. That's why we can sit around God's blessing. He's blessing our church or he's blessing our family. And we sitting around looking like a frog on a log, like we don't know what's going on because that thing has not kickstarted in us. And we're missing, we're missing a destiny moment. We're missing a moment with God. Yes, right, Pastor. All it takes is a made up mind. All it takes is a made up mind. Yes, Minister. But yeah, we we, we got to change us first. And I pray that that's our prayer, right? That we don't just do this faith walk, right? This is not about going to church or, or no, it's all coming about. No, it's a faith walk. 
that is that God changed me, change the way I think. Bring me new life. Bring me a new life in my thinking. Bring me a new life in my behavior. Kickstart a new life, Lord, in the way that I talk, right? I don't, I don't want to be the same person that I was last year. But it takes you making up your mind. And I said it Sunday, and you have permission. Hear me. You have permission to change your mind. You have permission to tell the devil, I'm not going to live like this anymore. I have a new life in Christ and I'm going after it. I'm going to get it. I'm, I'm going to get it. There's something that God has for me in my 30s. There's something God has for me in my 40s, in my 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, in my hundreds. There's something God has. There's a new life for me in every, in every day, in every week, in every month, in every year. When he wakes me up, he's trying to expose me to something new and I'm going to get it. Make up your mind. I'm going after it. When my feet hit the floor tomorrow, I'm everything God has for me in this life and the new life that he wants me to be exposed to, I'm going to get it. I'm not staying stuck here. I'm not staying here. I'm packing up and I'm going to move it on. And say that you're not going to hold me back. And, and the Adam that's in me ain't holding me back. I'm going after it. I don't care. I'm going, uh, we got members that, that, that they told me, Pastor, I'm going back to get my GED. So proud of them. Listen, you don't care. You ain't missing. You you are right on schedule. Don't let them. You that's what you get. Uh uh. I'm going after it. Pastor, I'm opening my, up my business this year. Go after it. There's new life for us to be exposed to, y'all. And we're sitting around here depressed and mad about what hasn't happened. What about what God wants to do? Make up your mind. I'm going after it. I might be eighty. Glory be to God. But Tyler Perry showed us you can start acting at 80. I'm going after this. There's something that God wants to, to show me today before I go to bed. There's something, God, if I wake up tomorrow, there's something new God wants me to see. And I'm going to get it. I hope that's your prayer. Well, Pat, then my, I would, when I was 22, you, what? No, 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 no. Mm -mm. release that all the days that you had since that day you, you you missed what god wanted you to be exposed to because of one thing mm -mm. no that adam that adam's got to die what was that movie Aaliyah was in romeo must die uh, adam must die he got to die he's not gonna hold us back because some of our greatest temptation is regret, embarrassment, shame, guilt. That's what, and say, he know, he keep talking. Mm, ain't no way God going to use you. God ain't got no blessing for you. He ain't blessing you. Look at how you, what, what, look what you used to do. Look what, you got a record. Everybody know what you did. Oh, ain't, you should be embarrassed. You should be, your mama didn't raise you like, Satan, get out of my ear. I don't, I, listen, it, it, I did it and it's in the past. It's under the blood, and God said he threw it into the sea of forgetfulness and will bring it up no more. So why in the world am I repeating and replaying my greatest mistake? Take the strength out of your bad decision by forgetting about it. Take the strength out of your worst sin by throwing it into the same sea that God threw it in and moving on with your life. This is not in my notes. I'm going back to my notes. I'm sorry. Somebody need to hear that. We in the second quarter this year and you sit moping around about something that happened in 2020. So what? God didn't kill you when you did it. He obviously forgave you for it. Move on with your life and gain and attain the new life that God has for you in Jesus Christ. Well, Pastor, you don't know what I did. It don't matter. You don't know what I did. And God, look what, and, and God's still using me. So, and he ain't got no respect to person. Go get your life. Go after it. But each in his own order. This is verse 23, 1 Corinthians 15, 23. Y'all got to read it for yourselves. But each in his own order. Christ the first fruits. He's the first. Then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Do I get anybody that belong to God? They belong to Jesus. He said, he says, uh, 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 the, the first one, 
That was Christ. But y'all know we're gonna we're gonna receive the same experience. He said, we'll never again be subject to weakness, never again be subject to illness, never again be subject to aging. There will never be another death. He said, he's going to come. He's going to scoop us up. We're going up to heaven and we ain't coming back. And I'm so glad about it. I love being on the earth. God knows I do. Thank you, Lord, that you chose me. Hallelujah. Out of all the possibilities to live on this earth. But I'm so glad that I ain't got to stay here forever. Because it's rough out here in these streets. Yeah. It's, it's rough. And I thank God that I can experience, but it's rough. And I got a testimony. It's a witness. It's rough. I, I'm glad for life. Oh, yes, I am. But I'm also glad he's coming back to get me. Because this life ain't easy. And don't y'all be fooled by it. Don't, don't be fooled by the smile. Don't be fooled by it. But, but, mm -mm, mm -mm. Life is hard. And that's why we got to hold on to these promises that God gives us. Because if I, I just don't believe God put us on the earth to sit up in here and watch these fools act a fool on TV, pay bills, breathe, work, and die. No, no, there's got to be more. And there's got to be something else after this. Got to be. I don't believe God would create all this earth and all this world and all this universe and all this galaxy for us to just sit around here, watch the sunset, sunrise, go to work, sit in traffic, go home. Mm -mm. Now there's something better. There's something greater. There's something greater out there. And expect my expectation says there's got to be more. Oh, there's got to be more. That's why, sister, y'all better y'all better agree with me on YouTube tonight. I'm I, I'm trying to move on. I am. I'm gonna stick to the scripture, but go after it. Can I whisper it? Says there's nobody here but us. The secret is out. Go after it. And when you belong to Christ, this is verse twenty three. When you belong to Christ. You know that this is not the end. And so listen to this. I want y'all to hear this. If death is not the end for those who belong to Christ, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 23, why do you think whatever you're facing now is the end? Oh, we need to talk. Let's pause for a second and think about it. Why is it if God told Paul to reveal to the Corinthian church through Christ's resurrection that this is not the end? Death is not the end for those who belong to Christ. Why do you think that what you're facing or what you're dealing with or what you're battling is the end? If death can't stop us, what makes you think that that mountain that you're facing is, going, is the end? It's not. That illness is not the end. That report from the, that's not the end. This season that you're in right, that's not the end. The enemy is trying to major in an illusion to make you think that this is the end, but it's not. If death cannot stop us, nothing can. If death can't stop us, if death can't stop Jesus and this ain't Jesus is in us, you, I said this a couple of weeks ago, y'all, we're unstoppable. We don't know our own power. And that's why we walk around with our head down. Oh, we, no, no, no. You cannot be stopped. If you put your mind to it and start working towards it and pray about that thing and work it, it has to come to pass. It has to. We're unstoppable. What the enemy wants us to not know is that we're more powerful than we realize. So he plays around. He plays around with, oh, look at why. He plays around with why you're going through this. And I can't believe God made you go through that. And what kind of God? Mm -mm, I'm unstoppable. When you when, when you go through uh, 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 these these uh, struggles with your family and y'all come out on the other side unstoppable. 
when you have a, a diagnosis and you get healed, many of us had COVID-19 and we did not die. Hello, somebody. Unstoppable. You get cancer. We've got so many members who have been stricken with cancer. It is an attack. And they have overcome it. Unstoppable. And I'm not talking about uh, just any old kind of cancer. Brain cancer. Y'all, of the brain, they had to cut this and go in and take it out. And they're still around, functioning. Stronger now than they were before. We're unstoppable. But the enemy wants to convince us that, ooh, look, mm, look what you're going through. Look what you're dealing with. That's the end. That's a lie. It's a lie. Death can't stop us. Nothing can. I wish somebody would help me right there. If, 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 you mean to tell me death can't stop? And we say it all the time at funerals. Old gray, old death, where's thy, old gray, where's thy victory? If there's no gray, if there's no victory there, nothing that happens to us can be more victorious than the God that's in us. So this quarter, what we need to do in the second quarter of 2024, we need to recognize and realize the power that is within. And that ain't going to be, that's not found uh, on, on Oprah Network. That's not found in uh, uh, you burning a crystal, you know, burn, uh, rubbing up a crystal and, and, and lighting a can't No, your power is in his word. When you realize what God has given to us and as believers and what we access because we belong to God, man, you'll walk around here with your chest out. Come on, y'all. That's it. Sometimes we need to get, that's right. Thank you, Sister Gloss. Sometimes we need to let the R&B, the prophet of the R&B speak. There ain't no stopping us now. We on the move. We're not, that, 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 what, 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 that, what's that song about? Ain't no, that what they're talking about, no family reunion or whatever they were singing about. That's, not, that's, the, that's the prophetic word over our lives. Nothing can stop us. Listen to 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10. Thank you, Pastor Davis. Paul makes uh, uh, four statements in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10. Listen, that describe how Christians respond to the trials of life. We are troubled on every side, but not distressed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Cast down, but not destroyed. The unstoppable. Unstoppable. Listen to me. You ain't got no money right now, and you still got food to eat. Unstoppable. Some people lost their job, bills still getting paid. You're unstoppable. Stop letting this stuff stress you out. And y'all think I'm just talking about this stuff. Y'all should have been uh, with me and my wife this morning at 930. This morning. She was stressing out about something. I said, I already knew that. I knew that wasn't going to happen. Y'all can call it ass. She said, no, you." I said, that thing, there's certain stuff that happens in my life that it doesn't even register with my spirit. I'm telling y'all, there is a place in God where God will give you a registration card. My God. Stuff will come in. They'll say, oh, you know, you, that stuff don't, and if it don't register with my spirit, I can't even agree with it. And I can't stress about something that doesn't register with my spirit. Both be, both, I said, mm -mm, that don't register. Now, if something, if I get a, if God sends an inkling at something, then I have to really fast and pray. But some stuff, it goes in one end, out the other. If it don't stick in my spirit, I can't even stress about it. I can't even worry. I can't even put a thought to it. Put no thought. I can't. Because I realize we have the power. Life and death is in our tongue. Oh, we got to stop. Oh, we got to stop. Because I want to hold you to the one hour and we got to pray. But y'all, the resurrection is not just about death in the physical. It's not just about, it's bigger than that. It's not, it's not bigger than that. It's, it's, it's added benefits. 
Christ showed us not just new life after we die. My God, he can resurrect any dead thing. He went, we say this and we read it and we, and we shout about it. Oh, he got up with all power in his hands. He went to hell and took the keys from Satan. Well, then who has the power over hell? It ain't Satan. We hear these things and we forget about them when we get hit or when we get attacked or when something happens in our life that we don't like. Every, and everything that God has through Jesus Christ, he gave it to us. All right. Lift up your head, oh, you gay. Lift that head up this week. Lift it up. Some of us, we, seriously, I need you to actually do it. Lift that head up. Square your shoulders. You know, sometimes we got to get in posture. You got to get that posture right in the physical. Slumped all over, looking all sad, eyes all dim. Open them eyes up and lift that head up. You're strong. Listen, you're too strong to be this weak. You are, I'm telling you. We're going to pray. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. 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 The prayers of the right. It, it ain't the prayer. This is scripture. It ain't one prayer, y'all. You can't pray one time and then quit because you didn't see what you prayed for. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. We're going to lift up the names that we have. You know what we do every Tuesday night for 15 minutes or so. So put them in the chat if you have people that you're interceding for. Thank you, Ryan. Lift that head up. Thank you. That's all you got to lift that head up. When you go, go to the dog's office, lift it up. What's wrong with your neck? I'm looking to the Lord. That's what's wrong with it. Kathleen Hempstead, Meredith family, Corinne Redmond's family, Sister Melody, Carrie Redmond, Larry Jones, Marie and family, Isaiah Francis. These are the names that we have. Please put those names that you're interceding for in the chat or if you're on conference call, star six in just a moment. Isaiah Francis, Janet Hall, Demaya Potts, Curtis Cobb, Joseph Conway, Ornetta Jones, Rosa Johnson, Ron Johnson, Sapeta Adams, Miriam Roberson, Tamar and family, Jackson family, Ramona Coy, Howes family, Stephen Howes, Holloway family, Langston family, Dobson family, Brown family, Lennox family, Harris family, Sonia Dixon, Jesse Jones, Jonathan Haley, Davis family, Pastor Rhonda Davis, the Ewing family, Sam Ewing, Jasmine Davis, Tony Wiley, Nicole Wilkerson, Marquisha Salenti, Bernice Jackson, Ernestine Butcher, Calvin Harrell III, Yuri and Uriah Williams, the Brent family, Richard Brent, one and two. We're lifting up both of them. Baker family, Lee Props family, Devonia Williams, Donnell Johnson, Ajawan Jones, Mellon family, Patrick Duncan Jr., Karen Seaton. I see you online, Sister Karen. Hey, it's Joseph Davis, Dinah Deese, Robin Thomas, Lonnie and family, Lonnie and Lonnie Moore, Ricky Johnson, the Bassett family, Geneva Ward, Bernard Baker, Mona Royster, Oscar and Sarah Hamilton, Chef Hills, Eugene Redmond, Linda Brim, Clarence Johnson, Benita Daniels and Malik, Darlene Crow, Carolyn Brown Lockin and family, Edward Sampson, Wood family, Doris Steen Vicks, CJ Baspit, Suzette Hayes, Mary Brown, John and Cordia Wade, Wade Bird, Aaron Parker, Kanishan family, Nicole Johnson and family, Francis family. Happy birthday, Brother Calvin. Henry family, Brother Otis Jenkins, Trinity Williams and Israel, Tasha, KJ and Kenny Hayes, Malia Arthur, Sister Karina, Sister Sherry, Sister Bev, uh, Mother Birdie Deese, uh, our church, Kyle's Temple Sacramento, or whatever church you are part of, but thank you for joining us tonight. Cameron Baspin and family, Brother Gilbert, Brother Andre, praying for more of God for all of us, Tiffany Bartow, Barstow and family, Cynthia Brown, the mem family members of Miriam Harrell, Shaw family, B. Pinnell, uh, all of our young people, especially our men. Ain't it a blessing to see all these men coming to Christ? The nine-year-old came to Christ Sunday. Amen. Brother Jaden, uh, Tashib Atkinson, Ivan Brent, the Daniels family. Hey, good to see Brother City tonight. Uh, Brother Ruby Daniels, the Cole family, Kevin Millender, Marvin Jenkins, Shaw family. Uh, we're praying for 
uh, Sid and Zena Daniels, the Wears family, uh, Aaron Hayes, Anthony Sanchez. We're praying for those uh, still in the Baltimore area, Janet Hall. Uh, we're praying for Devin and Kat in the birth of their daughter, Robin Thomas. We're praying for Mount Pisgah Merced, Ruth Daly, Charlene Bailey. Uh, we're praying for Sister uh, Doreen, these, uh, their son, our son and family as they're traveling throughout the Caribbean. Amen. Yolanda Baspit. Amen. We're praying for Jasmine, Sister Jasmine, Brother Avery. Amen. Valentino Sanchez, Melissa Treadway and family, Latrice Jones. I think I said Cynthia Brown. Amen. All of our pastors, the Spencer family, I see you. Amen. Prayers to Debbie Burnett family, Misha Burnett Durham, and prayers to, to the Mock Ford family. Thank you. Amen. Sherry Brewster and family, thank you. The Tawali family. Amen. Thank you. Tay Hodges and family. Amen. We see them coming in. Amen. Well, Pastor, why we call their names out? Because we want God to know who we're talking about. <laughs> Amen. The prayers of the righteous avail of much. Amen. We don't, we don't, vague prayers are good sometimes. Amen. But sometimes you got to be specific. Amen. Fred, family of Fred Prosper. Hope I'm saying that right. But if not, God knows who I'm talking about. That's what I love about God. Amen. We are pray, a praise. Can we just, can I talk to you? Listen to this, y'all. Listen to this. This is why we pray. This is why we call folks' names out. I ain't going to tell the business, but I'm going to tell you the praise report. Brother Lonnie Moore, that we've been praying for, the infection is subsiding, and the doctors will decide tomorrow whether he can go home. He will need a follow-up to correct the procedure, but he's doing much better. We thank God. Sister Ramona Cole is flying out to see him Thursday. If he is not released tomorrow, I ain't going to tell y'all what they said or what she said might happen on Sunday, but God turned that thing around. I'm telling y'all, you better amp your prayer life up. You missing out if you ain't praying. Any other prayer requests? Christian Lynn, thank you. I see it, Christian Lynn. Any other? Star six to unmute. I'm going to get you out of here by seven. Amen. Amen. All right. If you're on YouTube, it is a little delayed, but they'll pop up as I'm praying and I will see them. Amen. All right. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. I want you tonight. I want you to do something for yourself. I want you to just, I want you to just, as we pray, thank God for what you're praying for, right? Thank God for what you're praying for. That's a different perspective because sometimes when we pray, we're, we're upset, we're mad, we're angry, right? But let's let's thank God for what we're praying for. I'm, I, Lord, I'm really struggling right now, but I thank you for the struggle. Lord, my mama is not doing well, but Lord, I thank you because this is how I will see your hand at work in my life. Lord, there's a lot of names that we called out tonight, but Lord, I thank you for every name that we've called out because Lord, that's a sign that you're going to show up in a miraculous way. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for this day, for another opportunity to study your word. Lord, you said iron sharpens iron. That Lord, moments like this, Bible study and other opportunities to come together as believers, Lord, it sharpens us. Lord, it allows us to hear something. Maybe that we've heard before, but now that we're in a different place in life, we needed to rehear it so that, Lord, we'll put our shoes on and go after everything that you have for us. Lord, in this moment, Lord, we thank you for what we're praying for. Lord, I thank you for the names that have been called. I thank you, Lord, for the battles that they're facing. I thank you, God, for the issues, for the challenges. Thank you, Lord, for the mountain. Thank you, Lord, for the rain. Lord, because if we never had the mountain, we wouldn't know that we could speak to the mountain. It has to be moved. We never, Lord, had the rain. We wouldn't know that you are a shelter in the time of storm. Lord, if we never had these names, God, to call on, we wouldn't be able to have praise reports like Brother Lonnie Moore. And Lord, we realize that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And Lord, I'm talking and I believe that, Lord, every name that has called and every person, that, Lord, that is assembled here tonight, right now, and that will watch the replay later. Lord, we are overcomers because, God, we've been washed in the blood. 
and we've heard the word of testimonies, Lord, that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Father, in the name of Jesus, it is none of our business what these persons are going through. And even the persons, God, that we're praying for, we don't know the specifics. We might not know all the details, but Lord, you said that if we ask, we'll receive. If we seek, we'll find. If we knock, the door will be open to us. And Lord, yes, even in the midst of the myriad of problems and issues and challenges and things that we have to deal with, Lord, all the hats that we have to wear, we pause God first just to ask that you would bless our family members, bless our friends, bless our co-workers. God, bless even, yes, our enemies. Bless, Lord, those in this world and in this nation that we don't even know about. God, move by your power, Lord, all over the expanse of this world. Lord, bring peace. God, bring healing. God, bring reconciliation. Bring resolution. Lord, bring salvation. Bring deliverance. And Lord, most of all, open our minds to be receptive to what you want to do. Lord, for the names that have been called Father in the name of Jesus, some of them really are having a tough time in this life. And you said that, Lord, in this life, we would and will have tribulation, but we should be of good cheer because you have already overcome the world. Yet again, God, you're reminding us that we are overcomers. Father, I pray that you will release confidence, Lord, in us being overcomers, even for every name that has been called. Let them know, God, they are an overcomer, that nothing can stop them. No sickness, no pain, no prognosis, no diagnosis, God, no bank account or the lack thereof, Lord, no employment or the lack thereof. Nothing can stop them. Nothing can stop us because we have the power of the overcomer. Father, I just pray that as we've heard tonight, the praise report, that Lord, you'll continue to send praise reports to let us know, God, that yes, the prayers of the righteous availeth much and where any two are touching and agreeing on anything that you would be in the midst. Lord, I pray that you will restore our confidence in you, that we will lift up our heads, God, and go to everything you have for us in this life. God, forgetting those things that are behind us. Lord, today and from now on, we press toward forward. We go forward toward the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Because God, everything that happened in our lives, God, if you said in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for our good. And Lord, I pray that even, Lord, that what we're dealing with, Lord, for those that we're praying for what they're facing, God, it's all working together together for our good. We might not see it now. We might not understand it now. We might not be able to apprehend it now. Lord, we may not be able to understand it right now, but Father, we believe in faith and by faith is all working for our good. And God, we declare tonight, nothing bad can happen to us. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for that. Nothing bad can happen to us. Because everything that happens is going to be turned to work in our favor. So, Father, I pray that you will just restore. Somebody, Lord, needs to be restored tonight. Somebody, God, needs to be strengthened tonight. Somebody, oh God, needs to be, God, rejoined in their joy tonight. That, Lord, we will not give up before we get to the blessing. That we will not give up before we get to the healing. That, Lord, we will not give up before we get to the resolution, before we get to the miracle, before we get to the next level, before we get to the elevation, before we get to the promotion. God, before you, God, allow us to come alive again, before we get to our next resurrection, before, oh God, we get to the next place that you have for us. Lord, we are not giving up now. We've come too far. Come too far, Lord, to shut down now. And God, I thank you, nothing bad can happen to us because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Lord, release that word to those that we're praying for. Lord, by your spirit, God, drop that in their spirit. Nothing bad can happen to you. I got you. God, somebody needs to know that tonight, even on this line, Lord, on YouTube, conference call Zoom, Lord, that you got them. Lord, the burden seems heavy, but you got them. The problem seems like it's too large, but you got us. 
You're not going to drop us. We are not going to fail. We are not going to let the enemy win. You got us. And I thank you for that, Lord. Lord, give us the strength we need to keep on going. And Lord, may we see your goodness in the land of the living. May we wake up tomorrow, Lord, and go after everything that you have for us. Lord, I pray that you will press the spiritual delete button in our minds that we will not be held hostage to our past. But Lord, we'll get up tomorrow and say, there's something God has for me and I'm going to get it. I am not going to die with all the blessings still living in the world. Father, I just pray that for the rest of this week, you'll show yourself that you will, God, reveal yourself to us in ways that we will be able to comprehend. You talk to all of us differently. God, you show yourself to all of us differently. Don't let us miss those moments. And Lord, I just pray again, God, for a fresh dose of strength. Lord, a fresh dose of strength to the people of God that we will not get weary in well-doing, knowing that in due season we shall reap if we faint not. God, we know you've already answered the prayer. We know it's already done on earth as it is done already in heaven. So, Father, we celebrate right now. We rejoice right now. We give you the glory right now, even at our house, because we know you inhabit the praise of your people, that God, you live wherever you, we praise you. Lord, you live wherever we give you the glory. And we don't have to wait for Sunday morning to shout. We can shout right now because the victory belongs to us. Bless us now. God, and we'll give you all the credit, all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. YouTube, you know what to do. Press the like button. Amen. Again, if you did not receive the announcements, text more to 844-352-1682. It's in the chat on YouTube. All right. And also, if you don't have Jesus Christ into your life, you want to rededicate your life tonight. Maybe you just need strength. You just need strength. I'll, I'll wait for you on YouTube. If you are one of the ones that says, Pastor, I need strength. I feel God tonight. I, I know some of y'all got to go. I know the kings are on. But if you need strength tonight, just put it in the chat. Strength. Lord, I need strength. We'll pray with you in this moment. We don't want to ever leave Bible study and think that you got everything. Amen. We want you to know that we are here to hold you up. Amen. Don't put, click that like button. But if there's somebody you don't know Jesus Christ, put save in the chat. You need to rededicate your life, put rededicate in the chat. You need us to pray for you specifically for strength. You ain't got to tell us your business. It ain't our business. You just put strength in the chat. And we'll, we'll pray with you and we'll wait for you. Come on. I'll give you 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Come on. Nine. Pastor. Yes. I'm, I got to go to class now, but I'm touching and agreeing with you. Mm -hmm on everything and god bless everybody and have a good night okay hallelujah god bless you thank you pastor david thank you all right amen eight seven six five four three two one amen but just know that everything you need god's got it go after it go after it amen i pray you have a blessed evening youtube pray you have a blessed evening zoom pray you have a blessed evening conference call and when your feet hit the floor tomorrow because we shall live and not die we shall live and not die when your feet hit the floor in the morning i want you to declare this god everything you got for me on april the 10th i'm going after it god bless you go live the new life